And we are back. We are live from the Remax office. Remax experts here. Main Street, Philadelphia, Mania. Man, it's beauty out there. I'm here with Mr. Joey. We're back. We are back. We something, are back. something happened. We're something, live. Something just happened. Something happened. <laughs> and what, what, something happened. What email did you just get or what text so, did you just get? Oh, so this is going to resonate with, uh, with our realtors out there and uh, maybe give you a little more confidence to follow up with that lead who told you no today, call him again tomorrow, um, or the person that's irate and mm -hmm. tells you to go after yourself right. and never call me again. Right. So this is a little interesting message. So we have a, <clears throat> we have a lead generation platform set up here um, and a couple of the realtors here at Remax get these messages and these leads here mm -hmm. um, from the brokerage. And this is one that's in my profile and uh, sometimes I forget to unsubscribe people. So this guy got a text that said, hey, unsubscribe. <laughs> They're on the do not call list, right. not the do not text list. So yeah. it says, hey, this is Joe McKay with Remax. Do you want to know your instant home value? He said, this is on January 10th. Do I know you? I don't recall requesting any information. On January 14th, they sent him the same message. He said, hey, did you not read my previous messages? Stop sending me this crap. <laughs> on January 23rd, I sent him the same message with a link to find out his home's value. He told me to fuck off and get a real job. Mm. So I sent him another message. This one's a little different, same concept. Um, and I'm never acknowledging any of his negative comments. He said, this is after fuck off and get a job. Yes, I did get that text. I didn't realize my health was worth that much. I am interested, please call me, Tom. Boom. Then he, I said, well, it says your house is currently listed with KW. Yes, they suck. I got rid of them when it didn't sell after nearly a year. Great, can we meet tomorrow? Um, yes, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Uh, the first day, it would actually be better if we could meet on Thursday. Look at that, that's after getting cursed out. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still following up with the same message. That's what I looked at. <laughs> it was just no the work. same message. And he's like, stop. Do you wanna know your job. value? No. Do you wanna know your value? No. No. Do you wanna know your value? No. Wanna know your value? Yes, I didn't know it was worth that much. How many no's are you gonna accept before you actually just keep going to get that yes, man? And that's what I love about the philosophy here. If you're looking to come and, and work with us and be a part of the team, come down to 4320 Main Street Mania. If you're a realtor, loan officer on any level, any individual, you wanna get money, or you're an investor, and that's what yeah. this is about today. <coughs> I'm gonna show you how we do it. So you were talking about the LOIs. We, um, LOIs, we were going through one. We're going uh, through and the deal selection. Due diligence. Due diligence. Closing, title. What I learned from it, man, don't worry about You don't need to have where, a plan. You don't need to know where. shit. You don't have to get all this philosophical. Yeah. You don't have to get all analytical. Just do it, man. Yeah. You don't need to ask everybody for their opinion. Yeah. You don't need true. to listen to your uncle with one investment property. That's true. Um, you just need to listen to us. Yeah, and you need to get it done. So here, here we're gonna go through it, and uh, we're sending the letters out. You got Carl calls you, and he's like, "Man, get me a duplex." Yeah, and uh, me up. I, I didn't even know what Instagram. I hate Instagram. Uh, I didn't even know how to use it. This guy go. hits me up on Instagram. I didn't even know what a DM was. <laughs> I got this little red icon here. It's Carl. So Carl's like, "Yo." Haven't seen you in forever, you know, how's life, on yeah. and on and on, I want to buy a duplex. Hey, let's cut to the chase. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> called him right away. I was like, funny you should say that. Right. I was like, how would you like 70 properties instead? Right. He's like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? So, obviously, I get him to put up the money and okay. we get the appraisals done. So, how, mu how much were the appraisals on that uh, one property? So? so, the appraisals, I think we paid like... Like four hundred a piece, so okay. total is like thirty. Oh, so it's still standard, just straight up. Four hundred. Oh, standard yeah, appraisal. Yeah, yeah, standard mm -hmm. appraisal. Standard appraisal. Depending on the lender. I thought they would just put it all together and give you a lump sum, like oh, this is what it is. So most they just, banks like, will. Yeah. That's how most banks do it yeah. because we used. Um, I'm not going to tell them. What we yeah. Used, but you got to come through Homefront Mortgage. Yep. Okay. If you come through Homefront Mortgage, but the lender that we used, they kind of underwrote this deal as if it were an FHA style mm. deal. So okay. there were FHA required repairs, there were uh, interior appraisals on all of these properties. I mean, it was, it was cumbersome. So it I mean, was, but I know half those properties were shit. Like, were they all no, up to par? Were they stellar? Were they yeah, stellar? Believe it or not, um, this was a diamond and a rock wow. type thing. Um, none of the properties, only two of the properties ended up needing repairs and that was because that's the good. tenants were evicted and they fucking destroyed them. Yeah, that's um, good. 
That's kind of on her. Yeah, well, I couldn't, I couldn't buy anything that needed repairs. Mm-hmm. I don't have any money. But also, you did your own little inspection, so you kind of knew before going in, because you know the appraisals were coming. Yeah. So you kind of knew, hey, these are pretty good. Yeah, so yeah. basically, you know, I, I looked at the rent rolls, I went out, I saw these yeah, properties. Yeah. Um, you know, we get under contract, and, and I went out and I went and I toured every single one yeah, myself. Yeah. Yeah, wow. um, that was our inspection. Yeah. You know, and I went through, I made a list of everything that I thought was a problem. Yeah. You know, and, uh, cosmetic stuff, um, chimneys falling down, windows, cracked windows, yeah. uh, things that, mainly things that I know when I'm listing a property that are going to be FHA property. or VA issues. Yeah. I asked for them on this too. So you asked for who to fix it? The sellers. Okay. So I went to the sellers and I said, hey, you know, you either need to give me a credit or, I mean, either way, these, these things have to get you fixed fix up for it, yeah. because they're going to ask for it. Yeah. So, you know, chipped rattling paint, garage yeah. chipped paint, you know, Easy. stupid shit like yeah. that, um, cracked windows, uh, what else? I made them put all the locks on one master key because at yeah. this point they had multiple property management right. companies. I mean, it was really, really sloppy the way that they were managing these before. Yeah. So I took them from negative cash flow to like positive cash flow. And we, we operate at like 14, 15% cap right now. Yeah. They weren't even close to that. So, but my thing was like, if they knew what you've done, would they, wanna, would, would they <laughs> have wanted to keep their property? Yeah, well, that's where it gets fun towards the end of this deal. Yeah. <laughs> would they, would they see all the shit that oh, you did? Oh, they did. Too. So uh, towards yeah. the end of this deal, yeah. it gets to a point where some of the sellers did see that I had changed everything, and they should have these done cash it. Yeah. flowing, and they wanted to try to terminate. Oh, yeah. See, that's the part that they won't tell you in real estate school and/or your investment seminar. Well, and they were they were bullies. They were aggressive. Yeah. Uh, two but of them were attorneys. One yeah. was a doctor, okay. and they would throw out all types of bullshit, and yeah. legal, fancy words. Yeah. It was just like, hey, go to hell. I'll go to court. You know, I. I, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Right. I'm getting this deal closed one way or another. Right. And they didn't know that you, you had an intention already set. It so. was done. Yeah. I'm closing that deal yeah. and you're not getting in my way. Right. Um, so I did. We kind of ended up closing the deal, but they fought me tooth and nail at the end. Yeah. Oh, they fought. They wanted out. They fought they, like a motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, it was. I was like ready to cry. I was like, this is yeah. over. It's all done. You know, yeah, I was like. Funny. So, but you were in it for a year and a half. You had the intention of going in there, refining for specific like three, six months, like? Yeah, so I knew <coughs> basically the way, um, so going through that like initial contract with each seller, um, the the contract was to be 100% seller finance. Mm-hmm. They're gonna transfer all the properties to me. They're yeah. gonna sign the deeds over. Yep. And um, I'll just average out kind of everything that happened. Yeah. Because uh, there's four sellers in this, so we're just gonna talk like there's one. Yeah. So the basically the deeds were held in escrow. Right. And what that means is yes, they're signed over to my LLC, mm-hmm. but um, the seller could basically record them back if he had to. Um, Under certain kind of like deed in lieu of foreclosure. Yeah. yeah, in certain conditions. Yeah. And I also could record them if I had to. So the deeds were not actually recorded until the lender said, Hey, we need you to record these so we can close. Okay, and that worked in your favor. Worked in my favor. But it also was in limbo because they could actually, if conditions weren't met, they could just pull them back and own the owner. Kind of, yeah. They, well, they would have to actually foreclose. I, okay. didn't, I didn't have to do anything Got except it. record them. Got they it. They would have to go through full it's foreclosure all, all proceedings. Sorts, yeah, and you know how So that. even if they were going to foreclose on me mm. because I didn't refi in that time period, right. I still knew I had two to three months before a judge did shit about it. And I could still pay off their note up until right. the day of foreclosure. Right. So luckily, we never got there. But the point is that you're extra protected, and that you're extra protected. That's that that's sense. awesome. I mean, well, there's one thing that came up, and and I, before we move forward, I want to talk in uh, reference to the problems or challenges yeah. or obstacles that you came before we move forward into the the progress here, because you are going to run into some shit. You are going to run into some roadblocks and walls, as Joe was saying here right now. Um, towards the end of the deal, they didn't want to. They didn't want to go. They wanted to terminate. So, other than that, from the start of the deal, what kind of big problems or challenges came up, and, and you had to deal with? Yeah. And how so did you deal with? The biggest problem that we we ran into um, on the initial group of properties, the guys, the bullies, we'll yeah. call them the bullies. They they had not paid any bills. Um, mm-hmm. They only paid their taxes when the township sent them a letter that they were going to tax out. Yeah. They only paid their mortgage when um, they were gonna foreclose. Like mm-hmm. they only paid those things as they came up. Mm-hmm. Um, they So they pretty much owed, you know, they think their purchase price on that group was like 1.5 million. Mm-hmm. Um, we ended up 
they ended up netting like fourteen thousand wow. dollars. Put it that way. Because they they owed yeah. every they owed they everybody, owed everybody everything. Mm-hmm. My nose is so it's yeah, no, it's fine. Um, everybody, so they owed everybody anything. Yeah, and that was a mess because my initial intention with these and with the other two sellers was they had turned. The other two guys had actually signed over the deeds to me. They weren't in escrow. Mm-hmm. I owned those properties 100%. It was recorded and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, we couldn't do this with the other guys. Right. Because, so, yeah. one, I wanted to do it because I wanted them to feel comfortable. So right. I was okay with it. So they knew that the deeds were in escrow. But also, they had to be in escrow because the minute we had recorded anything, the lender everything would was- say, hey, it's due on sale. Where's our money? Right. The tax authorities are going to want their taxes. Yep. And I don't have 1.5 million, right. and neither did they. Right. So everything was kind of held in limbo, and I had to come up with a. Um, we basically had to come up with an additional agreement that said I'm going to take over management um, because they weren't doing a good job. Mm-hmm. And if if you know I was going to make a mortgage payment to them every month, but if any taxes were due, if any repairs were needed, mm-hmm. if any anything needed to happen, mm-hmm. I was able to withhold the mortgage payment. Ah, and, and handle And that. just give them receipts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's what we did. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so you kind of clean, you helped them though. The, oh, I, mean, I cleaned the, the, that portfolio you clean, Yeah, you cleaned Taxes them Taxes were all taken care yeah. of at that point. Um, their mortgages were getting paid. The properties uh, started to get rented. Um, the majority, when they turned these over to me, we didn't have leases for half of the property. Mm. So the first two months was going around trying to get tenants to actually sign a lease wow. when no one fucking has a copy. Wow. Good luck. So, well, another part of this is when sellers are asked backwards, it may yeah. be beneficial for them to go with the Well, yeah, and luckily, you know, they were the easiest group in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, they really, they wanted to sell. They didn't like each other. They... Yeah, that's what I'm saying is how did they get all on board with... You know, we don't. You're working with four. I know we're talking like it's one seller here, but I think a, a challenge is you said I would not go into another yeah, there, deal. That with was like the other four challenge. Separate, yeah. the, the other challenge was that you know once this structure had turned out that hey this could really work. Yeah. Um, we got excited yeah. and we got this under contract with four different people. Yeah. Four different seller. Four different groups, and um, three of the groups were great. Yeah. The fourth group was great in the beginning yeah. and then things started to change yeah. you know once you cleaned them up yeah they were petty it was yeah. like you know <laughs> they hated each other so much yeah. that one day i had to drive to pittsburgh to get a piece of paper and it turns out that the one guy's law office was across the street mm. i remember that i remember and it was something that they had to obtain right it wasn't my responsibility but I wanted to get the deal done, right. so I did. Right. But that's those were the people we're dealing with. Okay, they all hate each other so much they wouldn't even go across the street to get a piece of paper. Yeah. So that was tough. The other tough part was that now instead of just coordinating with one entity mm-hmm. and one group of sellers, you're coordinating with four different groups of sellers, all who have their different sets of issues, different reasons for wanting the money. You know. Um, Basically, just imagine a, a real estate transaction where appraisals are delayed, um, the lenders delaying things, but just imagine that happening four times mm. with people who are attorneys, with people who like to threaten you. You got any gray hairs up there? Are, oh, they... yeah. The title company <laughs> pointed that out to me when this really? was Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a couple up there. Damn. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the biggest thing is I would, if you're going to do a deal like this, one seller at a time. Mm. So that's different. your only caveat. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. I purchased them from them one set at a time. Yeah. It was refinancing them in one blanket that mm. became an issue. Yeah. Um, also, very few lenders will blanket them all at once. A lot of lenders will do like individual loans across mm-hmm. all these properties. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Homefront Mortgage has some connections to get it done as a blanket mortgage. Homefront so. Mortgage is right here, 4320 Main Street. Come down if you're looking at, no, we, we got some bomb programs right now. Yeah, across the board for yeah. I mean, grant programs, 500 FICO score programs, VA, FHA. Yeah. You know, there are no, um, you know, we're not, we don't have minimums like 580, like a lot of other right. banks. Yeah, that's um, how I learned it. Oh, you yeah. got 580, 620. Yeah, we don't have that. No. Nah. Nah. Yeah. And also income loans. Non prime, yeah. sub prime, non prime yeah. programs. Non QM. Yeah, yeah. yeah. non QM yeah, products. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. Commercial, you name it. Yeah. So, yeah, come on down. Uh, give us give me your phone number. Yeah. Stop by. Uh, check out Homefront. Um, if you want to reach someone at the mortgage company, you can visit homefrontloans.com. Yep. Uh, you can apply right on there. Send your clients to apply. Yep. Um, or uh, shoot me a text or give me a call, 215 868 6379. Yep. And just make sure you uh, let Joe know that you found out about it on the Get Uncomfortable yeah. podcast show because that'll help us out, make sure that this goes out to even more people. Hey, we're to talk about now this is what i want to know because yeah. this is you know you said the last time you were going in between 
uh, the loan to cost, loan to value, yeah. and the differences with there, what kind of worked out in your favor, but what did you learn? So this goes back to not knowing shit and kind of like, <laughs> you know, uh, I could have saved myself a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, I could have cut down on downtime and probably gotten threatened a lot less than I did during right. the course of this deal. So there's, there's two, um, two ways to close this deal, at least with the lender I was doing it with. It was loan to cost. Loan to cost did not require any seasoning, so the deeds did not need to be recorded. There were no appraisals needed. Mm -hmm. They literally, at loan to cost, just an example, and there's more that goes into this, but the simple way of defining it is the contract price, 1.5 million, and whatever repairs you do to the property. So okay. let's say it's another 100,000. Right. So we're at 1.6. Got it. They'll give you 80% of that. Mm. Okay. so. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So you could literally do all that on a Friday yeah. and on a Monday get 80% loan to cost. Right. Okay. However, if you go loan to value, and this is where things make zero sense to me mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. they don't even make sense to the loan officer right. or the account executive at that bank. Right. But if you go loan to value, you got to get all the appraisals done. Mm -hmm. There's occupancy requirements. Yeah. They don't care how much money you put into the properties. They're only going to give you 75% or less of the loan to value, meaning the appraised value. Right. Right. So I basically wasted six months getting appraisals done, putting 80,000 out for repairs, yep. all to finally hear from the account executive, oh, well, we could do this loan to cost and 80% loan to, loan to cost, and we can include the repairs, repairs you did. Yeah. And I was like, well, why did I go? You're going to include the appraisals in that too now. Yeah. And they did, luckily, yeah. but yeah. that was after a fight. Mm -hmm. So we ended up with more money at the end of the day. But, gotcha. So that was an important distinction that you, know, you really don't know about. And you can't trust the banker to be the expert over there. Or going on 100% benefit to you mm -hmm. what, and your needs. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was actually the underwriter that suggested that. Ah. I was like, oh, that's great. Yeah. So the person yeah. who's supposed to be the product expert had no idea. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, that's very important. Loan of cost, loan of value. Note that. Find out more information on that. All right. So now we're heavy in the deal, man. Where you're looking like the finish line is around the corner. The finish line was around the corner about seven times. Yeah, that's I was it. given settlement dates all the way from August, mm -hmm. and obviously we just refinanced it, uh, last week, yeah. two weeks ago. You, did you have to close in Pittsburgh? Or you no, no. Luckily, everything is done um, through. Uh, they kind of FedEx yeah. packages out, and yeah. then the managing partner signs everything, yeah. authorizes everything, and send it back to the bank. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like an e-closing in a sense. Yeah. You know, there's so real no that? formal closing. So Just like they do treat it like a regular refinance. So if you ever refinance a mortgage, um, same thing. They, they You sign all the paperwork, two days later they fund it, and um, then you're done. Yeah. So it's about a three, four day process. I like that. And uh, what I love more is that you didn't know shit. No, you don't need to know. You shit. don't know. You didn't know nothing. Like, first, you learned, figure the rest out later. Yeah, you learn like everything right now. I mean, people like these guys, these four uh, investors, like they took years building that portfolio. Building it, building it, and, building it. And, and I don't want to buy properties yeah. one by one. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a couple of things that we did, like obviously, I'm basically asking sellers to give us their properties. 100% turn them over to me, turn over the management, turn over the money, and I'm gonna pay you a mortgage payment. Kind of scary, mm -hmm. but is. if you've been on market for four years, you, you, know, you pretty yeah. much should just take a shot in the dark. Yeah. So there's a couple different things that we were able to put in place um, over the you know four sellers. It doesn't really matter which one, but these are just different things that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, one seller, we let him continue to manage his own properties because they were cash flowing nice, he was doing a really good job self-managing. Yeah. Um, the other sellers, of course, deeds were an escrow. Yeah. That, that helped protect them. Yeah. Um, but it also protected me because mm -hmm. there was an automatic clause that I could record these deeds if I had to, right. um, to get this done. Yeah. And then the other way was, of course, deed in lieu of foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So if we got to a point, um, now this is good and bad, but if we get to a point where, you know, um, settlement or the refinance payout piece, mm -hmm. you know, we're not able to refinance them by the date that I told them, mm -hmm. they could just record the deed, foreclosure deeds back right. and they don't have to pay the transfer tax or anything like that. Right. So there's some benefits to that, but um, you know, and I was threatened by people that they were gonna go do that because this was dragging out so long mm -hmm. because of the lender, not because of me, because right. of the lender just taking forever. And you know, the good news is that foreclosures take forever. Mm -hmm. The bad news is they can use it to threaten you with it, but it's a good way to get something like this under contract and like, again, you're getting them to give you their properties 
And in my case, no deposit. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I have to to make them comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I think that's, uh, so that's yeah, what we did. Yeah. So you're patting backs and you're going up there with the smiles yeah. as well. Um, exactly. I'm just like, yeah, how many people actually will go out there and do this now knowing that it could be. Well, and the worst part was giving up like every ounce of pride that I had, you know, because it's not like I never sold a property before or anything yeah. like that. And, you know, I had to get on the phone with some of these guys and like, Big <laughs> that they were going to change my life. I mean, I p played the veteran card. I pulled every card that I could to get these guys to yeah. agree. Um, and believe it or not, the guys at the end of the day who gave me the hardest time were the easiest to sell. Mm. Um, which is interesting, but I mean, but we've all had those clients. So you think people really want to see you succeed? So you think it's a win-win situation with this 100%? Some, some of those guys really, really did want to see me do this yeah they wanted to see this work yeah um it yeah, helps they, them too they they had a goal in mind they want to yeah and they built these one by one and they yeah. appreciated that i was young they appreciated that i was trying to do something like this yeah and honestly some of them were just curious like hey this is kind of cool let's see if it can be done yeah you know yeah um and to this day three of the guys i'm really good friends with wow you know wow. We, we actually went out there twice just like um, before the closing, I had to drive out to get some tax certs, yeah. and the one guy who kind of got screwed a little bit after the appraisals mm -hmm. actually said, "Why don't you come over to my house for breakfast?" Because I was going to be like an hour early, right, to, to where I had to go, and they weren't open yet. Yeah, um, so I did. So yeah. now you know we're here. We are friends. You know, are they going to the go back to investing? What, do you, what are their goals? No, they were cashing out. That yeah. guy in particular was you know seventy plus, and and he um, he's ready to go. Yeah, he owns a large electric company out yeah. there, and he was yeah. just like he's ready to go. And, and that's what I was saying is you know uh, I have a mentor here in, in Maniunk, and he owned that 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 like I could point to a lot just on the streets here in Maniunk, and then he just was like he cashed out and went to to um, Hollywood, and so it gives more. The, the industry is always turning over. Oh, yeah. You don't have to worry about, oh my God, I'm never going to get a house. Is that, these old guys have it. And you know what I mean? It's always yeah. turning over. People have different views on things. They want to either move up, expand, and get rid of stuff. You know? Yeah. And you don't need to pay, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn this stuff. Yeah. I think that's important. That's, too, that's because, huge. Like, I didn't really have anybody. Like, so my whole startup in real estate was I. Got my license because I was training some guy's girlfriend at a gym and yeah. he was a realtor. Yeah. But they didn't teach me anything. Right. And then I met this other guy, Bob Mazur in the gym. Yes. Yeah. Just this old guy who's doing 200 crunches and I and, used to joke with him. Yeah, and you had the, And one day he finally mentions, oh, I'm a real estate broker. Mm. And I said, I just got licensed. And he said, um, you know, and that's when he told me he owned all these properties. Yeah. And I said, I want to do that. Yeah. And he said, you need to buy and sell real estate first. Because mm, that was his way. Then you can come was, talk to me yeah. and I'll oh, show you what I do. Gotcha. So then we start up at lunch every month. But what didn't he do? He didn't tell me, hey, go wholesale these properties, go, you know, go pay fifty thousand for this seminar, go take advantage of people. I love that. None of that crap. He said, go that. buy and sell with clients, do it the right way, do it the ethical way. Right. And make some money there. You'll learn the value I of properties. That. You'll learn how a transaction goes. Yeah. Then I'll show you what I did. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's See, to me, I think there's a right way and there's a wrong way, and a lot of people are doing it the wrong way. And I saw it here definitely today in Philadelphia when we went over there and that guy got burned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and no, no, man, I'm not shooting down wholesalers, but there's another way, man. There's well, real estate investing way. is kind of like, I don't know, it's like a buzz thing right now. It's like, it's everyone's actually, it's an actually gonna implode. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of don't even want to call myself mm -hmm. an investor or anything yeah. because it's just like, it's too It's trendy, like calling yourself an entrepreneur. Right. Anymore. Even that, I don't I even want to do that. Anymore. Yeah, it sucks. Say it, it because sucks. It's, people are ruining it. Yeah, yeah, it's gotten to that point. Um, so when you call your sixteen-year-old coach later on, yeah, you just talk to him and yeah, there's a ton life, of uh, guys. This really good. <laughs> there's really great business coaches <laughs> yeah, yeah. on Instagram. They are uh, anywhere oh. from sixteen to twenty-one years old. They've run multiple companies. Yeah. Um, you know they get a lot of nerve. I would never go you know, like even at this point. I knew this point, was gonna turn. <laughs> Even at this down. point, I would never like go out there and say, hey, pay me to teach you how to build a business. I am nowhere near where I want to be. But here's the thing, though. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I watch 80s bodybuilding documentaries. Yeah, yeah. I'm always talking about mm -hmm. Arnold, Arnold, and I'm always talking about now I'm on Lee Haney, and Lee uh, Haney did this interview eight times Mr. Olympia, right? He was like, he did this interview, and the guy was like, well, you know, there's a lot of bodybuilders on 
Instagram right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. and they're like, they got their supplements, they got yeah. their deals, and they're just crushing it, and they're like big and brolic, and he was like, man, these guys don't know about shit. Everyone's a competitor now, and I hate it. <laughs> he does, he's like, they don't know about shit. He's like, listen, bro, we don't have no fucking coaches. Nah, it's he's really like, ruined. We didn't have no, like, our formula was like, we just had a picture of what we wanted yeah, to become. Yeah. And we fucking were in the, was in the gym every single yep. day. We had no coach. We had a training partner. Yeah. And when he said that, I was like, this is the problem with what's happening right now. Yeah. And especially well, that's why, like, a lot media. of the reason that I went to, uh, I switched up and I changed my routine to go at 6 a.m. was mm -hmm. because, like, the people that are going to the gym are not the type of people that I want to lift with. Like, yeah. I want to go with people who are actually serious, lifting yeah. heavy, yeah. making progress. Not, not checking in while they're playing around on the treadmill <laughs> or taking stupid fucking pictures of themselves. Yeah, like, yeah. hey. By the way, anyone can weigh 130 pounds and be ripped. Yeah. You know, like it's just I, I the whole the whole fitness industry is destroyed. It's, crazy, it's part right? of the reason that I sold the gym that I owned in, in Jersey. See, we didn't even know that. Talk to me about the gym you own. That, is that another podcast? Oh, uh, it might be can, another podcast. We can talk about you want to talk about. Yeah, we, we should talk about. You want to talk about a fun deal? Yeah. That, no, we're gonna definitely get into that. So let's let's just wrap this deal up right sure. now. Uh, because I want people to know that they can do it and I think that's the f focus of this podcast and always been for get uncomfortable Just get uncomfortable and do that shit if you're comfortable if you're thinking that you need to watch another webinar seminar Go pay well, 50 grand <coughs> or something. You're, you're never going to do anything never gonna do anything and you can't really worry about what's going wrong like I see that um I see what like I no, I went into this blind I didn't know what I was doing and also with the realtors that we have in the office I see that a lot too mm. where they're so afraid to Fail. sometimes press a button on their screen yeah because they don't know what's gonna happen yeah. and it's like just press the fucking button we can fix anything stop being stop it's so simple we can fix anything I'd rather you come to me and say hey I got 170 units under contract and I'm gonna get sued I don't know where to get the financing yeah. from yeah. and then I would say but you did get 126 units under contract. Boom. Let's figure that yeah. shit out. So like, those are the people that fit in here. You know, yeah. like, um, shout out to Tyreek King, yeah. one of our new agents. Yeah, like Tyreek, um, shout yourself out, man. Shout out to, to yourself and yeah, Jess. Hey, listen. I mean, we, Jess to Silva, I mean, we, we go and we get, you know, I, I give them kind of assistance. Like, what do I gotta do? Yeah, we'll yeah. fucking call some people. Right. Call Land Voice. We pay for Land Voice. Oh, and shout out to Deb Spence, who will be on the podcast soon. Yeah. Um, she helped kind of get them ramped up. And hey. it was like, what did, cool that, yeah, what did that guy say on a text? We were sending out a bunch of marketing texts. We're yeah. recruiting heavy here, so you gotta come. I think we're over here now. You gotta come, uh, come in and, and get with us. But what yeah. did this freaking jerk say on a text the, uh, when you're recruiting? Hey, listen, no one call, no one that's successful cold call. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Crazy. One, guy was, one guy was telling me that uh, successful realtors don't cold call, and I was like, hmm. So of course, naturally, I checked his. So volume. I guess he has people just walking through. <laughs> no, his no, office naturally, I checked his volume. Oh, and, that's uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's he, what. he won't be recruited. Here. Yeah, yeah. So so we want people. I mean, you don't have to go. You know, try to jump off the bridge and say, hey, "Listen, I'm the best at everything." We know people walking in this door really don't know anything, right? Yeah. Um, but the goal is that you can't be afraid to take action and actually do something. Yeah, not, not no matter. Of new agents. Yes. No matter if you don't know, man. Yeah. I mean, that's a part of it, and it's the beauty of it because it's fun, and you learn that way. Back in the day, I did hip hop, right? Yeah. There's a machine, a beat machine called MPC, and it's like thousand to twelve hundred dollars. I got yeah. one off of Craigslist, obviously with no instruction manual, for five hundred bucks, and yeah. I got a turntable. I'm making beats. I didn't fucking go online on YouTube to try to figure out how to make beats right. or try to, you know, I'm not touching, but I'm banging this thing up, I'm beating it up, I'm messing up, I'm erasing beats that I've done because I don't know what to do. You gotta screw up. You gotta freaking be well, okay like, with failing. Since we're on it, I mean, since we're on it, you know, <clears throat> I didn't know I didn't know anything about opening a mortgage company. I didn't know about yeah. recruiting to a mortgage company. Yeah. I didn't know how interest rates came up. Yeah. I own a mortgage company. Yeah. I didn't know how to open a title company. Yeah. I opened a title company. I just made a freaking call yeah. to a title company and said I want to do a JV. Yeah. When I it. wanted to open the mortgage company, I Googled how to open a mortgage company. Yo, it's pretty crazy. simple. It's pretty freaking simple, and now we're attracting good people. Yeah. Um, I also went from realtor of only maybe like two years, no, actually le like less than that, I think, yeah. maybe like a year or two. Yeah. To owner of Remax, to then the broker. Yeah, it's really not complicated, and if you, you know, if you and are they able to, things. they overcomplicate everything. Yeah. And the fear. Why Remax? 
Nobody in the world sells more real estate than Remax. That's a fact. So it's no surprise that when you join Remax, you become part of the world's most productive real estate network of more than 120,000 agents. Can a brand name make a difference? You better believe it can. The Remax brand can help you do big things for your career. Top brand awareness means buyers and sellers know you before they've met you. When you're with Remax, you need no introduction. At Remax, you're shoulder to shoulder with career-minded quality pros. When you walk among top producers, you'll be inspired to grow your business. Check out the numbers. Now you know why more buyers and sellers would recommend Remax than any other real estate brand. There's a world of opportunity at Remax Agents' fingertips. The Remax network spans over 100 countries and territories. International business can be your new reality. All over the world, Remax Agents translate global connections into sold. At Remax, you'll find new ways to help you get ahead. Think mobile apps, iPad presentations, and Remax.com, which draws massive traffic and serves as a springboard for fee-free leads. Every tool is designed to help make your business more streamlined and effective. How's this? 3,000 leads delivered to agents every day without referral fees. The Remax online system connects buyers and sellers directly to you. It's generated 18 million fee-free leads to the network. The leads come straight to your phone, and you take it from there. The more you learn, the more you earn. With the push of a button, you can stream over 1,000 videos and more than 70 designations and certifications via phone, tablet, or Google Chromecast from Remax University. Great things happen when Remax agents get together. From the unforgettable R4 convention on the Vegas Strip to international niche events, you'll have next level access to invaluable learning and networking opportunities worldwide. At Remax, group buying power is what gives rise to the world-class promotions that earn consumers' attention. From TV to social media, advertising is part of the reason Remax is the number one name in real estate. This balloon has clout. Why Remax? It's time to see for yourself. Welcome back, welcome back. Get on Comfortable Podcast with Stacy and Joe live here at the Remax office. Remax experts, Manny Young, Philadelphia, 4320 Main Street. Come down, check us out. I know you saw that video clip. Hey, Joe, we're in part three here. You were saying something. We were saying something. And you... We, uh, yeah, we were saying something. We were saying something, and it was just like, hmm, that was in. You know what you said? You know what the worst... You said, you know what the worst part is? I know we were talking about um, investors coming into the game. We don't want to call ourselves entrepreneurs. It's watered the hell down. Uh, I agree with you 100% on that. Um, all these entrepreneurs out here, you sell a book online and all of a sudden yeah. you're an entrepreneur. So let's take it back to business owners. And um, All right, so we're here at part three, 100% seller's financing. We're breaking down the deal of Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh deal. And uh, Joe was here saying that there was a lot of challenges a lot and of challenges, yeah. Gotta, yeah, all of it in one. And now the deal is finally closing. But you got to have some teams, man. What, what, team. are we, what are we you talking about? Here? You got to have a good management company in place. Um, you got to have good rules, rules in place for how different things are handled on leases. And then, um, of course, title company, mortgage company, um, and maybe in your case, a realtor. So um, one of the things that we do is we went out there, interviewed a ton of management companies. <clears throat> Three of them made it really easy for us because they were currently managing it and they suck. Uh, one of them, we only had to interview one, and um, they both were Keller Williams agents at some point, and they started um, Reaver Ridge Property Management. So shout out to them; mm-hmm. they are incredible. Um, yep. You know, this is this is supposed to be passive income. This is not something you should be managing on your own. You should not be taking tenant calls. You should not be um, doing any of that shit. You shouldn't be chasing down rent, filing evictions. You need a property manager that has all of that in place and has their own team. 
what made you like uh, Riva over the rest? They were um, like from the first. First, we got them from referrals from a few real estate brokers, okay, including a listing agent, and they managed his property. So I mm-hmm. figured, well, yeah, that's a good sign. Yeah. So we um, we met met with them, and they had a smaller portfolio at the time. They took this on with open arms. They were flexible with us, and within like. And you know, within two or three months, so that's, you know, we took like possession <clears throat> probably last February. Mm-hmm. So then within like two, three months, we were at over 95% occupancy. Um, everybody had leases. I mean, we were just square away. Yeah. We were in a good spot. Yeah. Um, cash flowing, all that stuff. Yeah. Like, uh, weekly updates. They're always available. Um, I've worked with property management companies locally. You can never get a hold of them. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the books are a mess. Mm-hmm. These guys just on top of their shit mm-hmm. and they want to grow. Right. That's the other thing. They want to grow. Right. Um, and they're not miserable. Yeah. So I <laughs> like them a, a lot. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. And they did an excellent job. So they're important to have on your team. And they, oh, you know what? They understand the process. They, they, they not once gave me a hard time about helping get appraisers in, helping get repairs done for inspections. I mean, it was just, we asked for it, it was done. Um, they never gave us a hard time if we had accounting questions or, or whatever the issue was. If I needed... Um, like once we refinanced, I said, Hey, you know, I didn't want to touch this before, but obviously some of the taxes are high because no one's ever bought them. Mm-hmm. Who do you know? Boom. Same day. Three attorneys. You should call all three of these, see who gives you the best price. They've all done it for us. They're excellent. Wow. So like everything we needed, they were able to help. Them. Um, we have two properties. I said in the beginning that we want to sell and cash out on because the equity is just insane. Um, and they gave us references for realtors to use. They gave us references for, um, they already, like, the minute I brought it up, they're like, oh, perfect. Ludwig, you need to do this, 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 this. They know my mm. properties inside and out. Mm. They're, they told me exactly what needs to be done on each property off the yeah. top of their heads. Wow. So I was like, that's awesome. So yeah. that, that piece is huge. Management is huge. It can make or break you. Um, and they're going to handle my mortgage payments. I mean, they, it's full service. Yeah. Full service for 8%. Wow. That's, 8%. Yeah. Wow. Um, and they're on top of things with our leases. So they kind of know, you know, you can. I see a lot of landlords that cut a lot of deals, especially when they self-manage. So the other reason you can't self-manage is because you become too involved. And you know, you can't, one, a tenant has a cell phone number, that's bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, I don't want them to know that I own a Remax or a mortgage company, because I could just imagine the reviews. And three, um, they know exactly what to do on these leases with the tenants. So, you know, we don't we don't play games. If, if a tenant is doesn't pay their rent, um, we serve them right away. Mm-hmm. You know, and they pay. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't wait. You don't wait. There's yeah. no wait. Yeah. Because it never works out. Yeah. It never works out. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not a fan of cutting the deals. I mean, Mark, uh, the one seller out there in McKee's Rocks, um, who did self-manage, who was very successful with it, he, he knew all his tenants. <clears throat> this, he's the only guy I've ever seen where that worked out for him. They're all long-term. He knew them all personally. But any other time I've seen that, I've seen it, and it's been a mess. Yeah. So, again, for me, this is passive income. I just like to see the wire hit every month. That and that's it. That's it. Um, as far as getting the team involved or like having a team set up, it's kind of like, I know they push this to people who are rehabbing for the first time. You got to have your team. You got to have your contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. Yeah. Same thing here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got to have, you got to have a realtor who um, knows what they're doing, um, knows investment properties, knows how to persist through a deal. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be tough though. If you're, if you're not a realtor, I would really try to do this part on your own because no one is going to persist through a sale like this, and a realtor is probably not going to want to work. They're not going to think you're serious if you tell them you want to buy something 100%. So you're yeah. probably stuck on your own, but a realtor might be part of your team. Um, a title company that understands um, that this deal is different, you know, that you're going to be holding things in escrow, that you're not going to be paying transfer taxes right away, that you're not going to pay for the title policy right away. Yeah. There's a lot of people that need to put up a lot of money and a lot of skin up front, even though you're not. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, luckily I own the title company, but I think that most of the time through that, they're probably wondering, are we, are we, are we going to get paid? You know? Right. Um, on, the, on the mortgage side too, I mean, you know, that you're not going to be able to work with just any mortgage company because, um, you know, they're going to get paid on the refi, but you're also going to be bothering them for that entire year to make sure things are set up perfectly right. so that you can get the refi done. Right. And your deal may, you know, two, three million in the commercial world is not a big loan. Yeah. And uh, and I bugged the hell out of these mortgage, you know, these mortgage people. I don't even know if it was worth it for them, but yeah. the point is we got it done. So you, you need it. a team that's going to stand by you. 
And, and just saying that, you know, I just want to give a shout out to our own title company yeah. in house. Incredible. Um, incredible. Um, I've done some deals with them, and I'll tell you what. Shout out to Anna, and uh, I forget her name. Kristen. Kristen. Actually, Kristen came by. Yeah. She did. Yeah, uh, she, drive. She'll come around to your yeah, closing. Yeah. Yeah. She came by here. So yeah, they they knock it down. Information is right here. See, we want you to work with us, man. Yeah. We want you to bring your deals here and work with us for the best um, options. We got the team already laid out for you. So. The number is right there on your screen. Give us a call, and uh, we'll we'll work with you. So yeah, and also those girls, will, if you're uh, if you're if you are a realtor and you uh, get any listings that close, um, they'll handle everything on the conveyancing side too. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a nice deal. Absolutely. So shout them out right here. We got the title company as well as our own in-house mortgage company looking for the best deal. We spoke about that. Yeah. So what else we got on this deal here? The Pittsburgh. I gotta, we gotta have a name for this. It can't just be the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh deal. Fiasco. Yeah, like <laughs> Pittsburgh P P. -P. Hell and Pittsburgh. Something. Hell and Something. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Hell and Al Pittsburgh. Joe got gray hair. Damn. Yeah. How many do you have? Yeah, at least thirty. At least thirty. Yeah. Not more than me though, man. Shit, I've been stressing out since you're, I was sixteen. In yeah. <laughs> out yeah. That's why he got it to the left. That's where. To yeah. the right. <laughs> All right. So. The, um, <clears throat> No, I mean, it's just, you know, the key to this deal, the key to any deal that you're going to do, the key to jumping into anything, one, just jump the hell in yeah. first. Um, stop planning it all out. Yeah. Stop. Just have a general direction and go. Yeah. Because you know the end goal. That's all you need is the vision. You just need the end goal. Yeah, that's you it. just need the vision. Yeah. I suck at details. Yeah. I'm not, I don't like that. I mean, that's kind of why. You see I the big picture. You see the big picture. I have the big picture. I never know how I'm going to get there. Yeah. And okay. that's a great example. Yeah, you know. that's perfect for having a vision. So you're a visionary, man. You just have a vision and you just do whatever just it takes to get it. there. Yeah. Yeah. The and uh, of, the art of not giving a fuck. I never read the book, but I imagine it has something to do with this. Yeah, I'm sure you need to read that book, man. I haven't read it either, and I'm over here uh, saying you need to read it. <laughs> but um, Comfort Killers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been one hell of a deal. I actually seen Joe go through it for the last at least four months of it, and um, you just been always. Now. Yeah, the last ones were, so I didn't see when you actually sent the LOIs. If you want to come in and you're searching for deals as well, come in. Stop in the office. Say, hey, listen, I saw the podcast. I saw the video, and I'm here, man. I'm an investor, and yeah. I want to get this deal done, and these are the properties I'm looking at. And uh, let us help you. Let us help you take that step. And we, we encourage you to do it, but if you need that team, we are here for you. we got Maximum Realtors here uh, that just puts in the work. Home front mortgage in the back, as you can see the sign. We got Joe here, and that's a big ass asset to have um, working with you on your team. So definitely bring your bring your deals here. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. Definitely help. Yep. So that's it. That's the show today uh, in three parts. Hopefully, you're catching all three of them to get the full scope. Is there any last words that you have uh, for this deal? For anything that you want us to know as far as investors or you know, the entrepreneur <laughs> world, you know what I mean? Like, what the yeah. fuck? You know, yeah. it's getting to that point, you yeah. know? But um, I just want you to, I, I just want you to know, man, you've been an influence to me here and yeah. definitely inspiring to the team. And we're growing like mad here in Philadelphia. Yeah. And you don't even have to just want to invest in Philadelphia. We have brokers, you're broke. I know you're yeah. broke in, in, in a lot of states. Yeah. Our home front, we're looking to expand that into national. all national, national, national domination, national domination yeah. for home front. Title could handle anything that you give to them. Yeah. So again, bring all your business here. You're buying, you're selling, you're investing, whatever it is. You want to learn more about what we're doing? Come on down, four three two zero Main Street, man. Joe, that's it. Yeah. It's a su it's a Love it's a freaking day. Sunday. Yeah, Sunday we're down here hustling. We're out That's showing it. houses. We're out uh, doing listing appointments. Yeah. Um, any questions you have on this deal? If you if you got more information, if you want me, to, if you want to run a, a deal past me, yeah. Um, shoot me an email. Yeah. At Joseph McCabe at Remax.net. Yeah. I'd be happy to get to that and see how I can help. Yeah, I love it. Peace.